Okay, now um, ha having removed the, um, the shaft, the main shaft with the worm gear and everything, we have a bearing at the top of the mast jacket up by the steering wheel here. There is a upper bearing with a brass track around it here on which follows a carbon brush so that your horn will honk wherever your steering wheel is turned. You can honk the horn and it'll operate because it takes an electrical path path through this brass track and if you'll, I don't know if you can see or not, but the brass track is insulated by a thin rubber rubber sleeve all the way around, a rubber collar all the way around here. So this brass is not touching the mass jacket. It's insulated by rubber. And inside here there is a wire connected to this brass track which comes down and exits out the bottom of the mass jacket right here where we plug in the horn. Now the horn, the way the horn circuit works, this is live 12 volts at all times and when you honk the horn the horn button connects this live wire and the horn track it connects it to to the mass jacket thereby honking the horn so it's it's important that this thing be in here properly and insulated from the mass jacket so this is just pushed into the top of the mass jacket it's a rubber um, cushion bearing and inside here is a ring which is is circular but has a break in it and this ring rests on top of the little ball bearing in here and there's a coil spring that fits over the steering shaft under the steering wheel which pushes down on this little ring and therefore pushes down on the upper bearing and the purpose of that is just to hold the upper bearing in position it isn't screwed in here it's just pushed in here and to hold it in they have this little spring that's mounted under the steering wheel and it pushes against this little split washer with a gap in it and holds the bearing down so we're going to take this out by I use a piece of one inch copper tubing ordinary water pipe in one inch ID inside diameter I push that up the column and bounce it against this and it'll push this out and there you can see it's it's come out and here comes the wire for the horn soldered onto the brass portion of it that goes through and becomes the, the horn track and in the kit that's provided by Corvette Central you will have a new one of these exactly like the old one same wire same length of wire same spade connector exactly ready to go in but you're going to have to reuse your little split washer so save this so now we're going to press out the needle bearing and the seal which are located in the steering gear box on the on the pitman arm side this is the inboard side as it's mounted in the car if you'll notice we have an oil seal here and inside there you can see hopefully I don't know if you can see I hope you can the needle bearing for this side similar to that other needle bearing in the in the cover there that we took off on the other side there's a needle bearing in there and we're going to push both of these items out of here from the other side and we're going to use a tool like this. This is a set of tools that I've had for as you can see a hundred years. It's a set of tools that are designed for driving bearings and bushings and seals in and out of housings and automotive accessories and it's made up in such a way that you can mix and match different diameter steel discs. You can see this one's well used. I mean, I've used this thing my whole life. And you make a stepped puller. You, can, you might call it like a custom-made puller 
for each and every individual application that you have with this kind of a set. As you can see, it goes up to a relatively large size. Actually, I have another set that goes from here up to even bigger. And this way you can, I want to drive out the needle bearings. And so see how the needle bearing fits right on there up against that stop? So this makes it a perfect way to get the needle bearing and the seal out of the side of the cover, which we're going to do right now, out of, this, out of the side, I'm sorry, of the steering gear box, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so now we're going to take the tool that I have um, assembled to push out the needle bearing and the, uh, and the um, seal, and I'm going to place it into the um, gear box uh, and, in, and into the um, needle bearing as so, and you see it stays put because it's placed in there. Use a, a decent uh, ball peen hammer and tap it, and out the other side comes the seal. There's the seal, the old used worn out seal that comes out. It's a, it's a seal in a metal container. I call it a tin can. And the rubber uh, shaft seal is in the middle of it. We're going to replace that with a new one. And then a, little, a few more strikes and the needle bearing will come out. And there is the needle bearing right there, the needle bearing assembly. Now in the case of the main case here, since we have access to both sides, we can use a little driver like this and we can drive it right on through. In the case of the side cover, it's what you call a blind hole. There isn't any access from the other side to drive this needle bearing out. So we have to figure out another way to get it out of there. And actually there are several ways to get it out and we're going to talk about those shortly. Okay, so now we talked about taking the needle bearings out of the side cover which has the blind hole in it. One of the cheapest ways to do it, an easy way to do it, is to use what's called a cape chisel. C-A-P-E, cape chisel. It looks like that. And you can place this cover on a hard surface and you can use a hammer and literally bend the stainless steel outer race of this needle bearing, bend it inward, distorting it, which will make it smaller in diameter because by pulling it and distorting it on one side, it narrows the diameter of this and then you'll be able to work it out of there. I use a more professional tool because I do a lot of these and the tool that I use is a, a blind a bearing removal, to, removal tool. This one's made by Snap-on. It has a slide hammer puller attached to it, which gives it the, the pulling force. And it has this kind of a feature here with two pieces to the, to the individual puller. If you'll notice this is attached to the slide hammer so you can get your impetus. This long rod goes into the hollow of the tool and pushes on a ball bearing that's in the center of these three segments of the puller. When it pushes on that ball bearing, it expands the three legs of the puller and I'll show you if I can show you here how that works. We'll run this down to where the long rod is contacting the ball bearing and then we will turn it further and notice the, the legs of the puller are expanding, opening. See how they're opening up wider and wider? So what you do is, you can actually, maybe you might even be able to see a glimmer of the ball that's down inside there when I twist it back and forth. There's a, that ball bearing is in there. So what you do is you place, you place this puller into the backside of the needle bearing, loosely like so, and then you crank it open so that the jaws of the puller expand behind it. And then you fix this in the vise, holding this rigidly, and strike it with the slide hammer and pull it out. And I'm going to set that up right now and demonstrate that for you so you'll see how it comes out. Okay, now what I've done is I've merely taken the side cover and positioned it in such a way 
as to be supported by this, this uh, vice. I have the tool in place just as I said it a few moments ago. And I operate the slide hammer and you'll be able to see the needle bearing come out of that case there. And there you have the needle bearing. Now you can really see the ball bearing inside there because it's, it's so widespread here on the end. And you'll see how that tool works. So now we merely collapse this, this again to get it off of the tool. So now we have pulled the needle bearing out of the side cover. And I'm going to change to a larger version of the blind hole puller to remove the bearing race that's nestled up here in the higher part of the cast iron steering gear box where it meets the mass jacket. There's another race in here that's very difficult to replace. Many people do not replace it, they leave it in place just because it's so hard to get it out. I prefer to change, I always change all of the parts of the steering gear boxes, so I'm going to do it. And I'm going to use my same puller that I did before, but with a larger, the next larger adapter on it. And it really works in exactly the same way. I put it in here and get it above, there it is located above that race. And then I tighten, allowing the ball bearing to spread the, sh the, the legs of the puller. And there you have the upper race that's located up in this area right up here, uh, right in here close to the tube where the tube comes in. And we've pulled that out, same way we did before. And in a minute we're going to talk about Another method of doing this, in case you don't have access to a blind hole puller like this. So now, one thing that's very important is to make sure that the inside of the mass jacket is clean. When we build the steering gearbox with all new parts, we, don't, we want to make sure that there isn't rust and debris stuck in here, which can migrate down and get into the new bearings and the new sector roller and and worm gear. So what I usually do is I take some paper towels and stuff them in the top here and use my same one inch copper water pipe like a little ramrod and I ram it down through and there they come out the bottom you can see the the grease on this and the dirt, see that from up the tube like that. We'll do it again. quite a bit to clean the debris out from the tube and looking up there it looks pretty clean I can see a little bit of, of striations of the grease up there but basically um, it's pretty clean <laughs> 